you're in a room, somebody drops a glass, you're, you, you're, you're, somehow your physiology knows it in advance or there is a response. Not Am I consciously. correct? Not consciously. Right, right. Okay. So how, that's a kind of what, a presentiment or a precognition? What, it's been called presentiment. Yeah, it's yeah. a precognition. Um, it, may, it may be related to precognition, but um, presentiment might be a better word because it's a feeling. And, but the thing is, we're not usually conscious of it, so I don't really even like presentiment. I, I like to call it predictive anticipatory activity because it's a physiologically uh, present activity that anticipates a future event in a way that's predictive. It's actually predicting. It's not just anticipating, maybe this will happen, it's actually correctly predicting. Um, but that's kind of a mouthful, But so I often go back to presentiment, and there are other reasons to do that because that's the historic term for it. So I'm aware of some scientists also working on this, people like Dean Radin, for example, yeah. Rupert Sheldrake, and yes. people like that seem to yes. be doing this. They seem to face a lot of resistance. Yes. Um, perhaps because it has rather sort of deep ontological implications that yes. uh, the now, whatever we call the now, is not really a now, that our yes. little window of nowness is actually much bigger than we're able to um, Well, yeah, it's either experience. much bigger or it doesn't or exist. Or something else yeah. is happening, <laughs> right. yeah, there's no now. Right. So where does this lead? It's rather intriguing, I think. Yes, so I where agree. does it lead us? So the implications are huge, and yet, and yet not. So here's why I think not. Maybe this is because I'm used to it, and it seems to me obvious that you would want one system, which I'm going to call the conscious mind, that decides to march forward in time. So it takes temporal slices in this linear one direction order, right? And that's our conscious experience, and it's the experience from which we create all of our physics, and all of our mathematics, and all of our daily memories, right? Then it makes sense you would want to have another system I guess, I guess my presumption is that time isn't a real thing out there. So um, I think that you would want to have another system that is aware that, that time is extensive and that, that, that time is like a room or a block, kind of like Einstein's block universe, right? And that, and that frankly, we could visit whatever moment in time. We can get information from whatever moment in time we, we would like. Mm -hmm.